right, my friends, welcome to another edition of the Solopreneur Movement. My name is Bruce Lund, founder and director of 90 Day Sales Manager, but more importantly to you, founder of the Solopreneur Movement. Just a reminder, if it's your first time joining us, a solopreneur is anyone who is solely in charge of their business growth on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, they're in charge of 80 to 90 to 100% of their business, whether it's sales, whether it's operations, whether it's marketing, whether it's mindset. And this is a spend time with talent edition. You know, I had the pleasure of going out and speaking in Tampa at the 2020 Vision Summit a couple of weeks ago. And I met a firecracker while I was out there, Laura Brandeo, uh, who I'm going to bring in now to introduce herself. But, but Laura, obviously, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast and, and spreading your wealth of knowledge. I know you've been around the mortgage industry your entire life, and I'll kind of let you tell that story. But I will just say, man, I love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. And you, you were the very first person that I met at the summit having cocktails, right? And we immediately met. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to have this person on my podcast. So here we are. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It is truly a pleasure. And yes, you're correct. I immediately recognized that you were the MC of the show. So right there, Bruce, what did I do? What was the first lesson, right? Now, of course, I already know who's hosting the actual event. I'm someone very connected to that individual. But in my mind, as we speak about how to be a solopreneur and how to grow yourself, you have to strategically think about what you're doing at all times. So even at that event, let's start right there. I immediately knew I had analyzed who was going to be at that event. I knew what was going to happen at that event. And I figured that who was going to be an important person for me to meet immediately? The MC. I made sure that you were somebody that I met, and I also made sure I was someone that was memorable to you. So right there, first lesson of solopreneur is that's what you need to do. Do your homework. Know where and, and when and how you're going to strategically place yourself to make sure that people remember you. That's lesson number one. So who am I? What do I do? What's my story? We were speaking a little bit before. I have been in the mortgage business for over 20 years. And just for all of you out there that are not in the mortgage business, nobody deliberately goes into our business. There is no course out there that says, I want to go into the mortgage business when you're a young person. Usually either someone brings you into it, someone recommends it, or you say, wow, that person has a really beautiful car. I wonder how they bought that car. Oh, they're in the mortgage business. Well, that seems like a good career for me. So we don't deliberately go into it. We accidentally fall in. How did I fall in? I was a very young mom and I was home during the day and I needed to do something in the evening. So Lo and behold, the job that was available to me to work in the evening was actually telemarketing at that time. And so I was introduced to, here's a telephone, there's a computer screen, refis are booming. So it's time to reach out to these people, find out what interest rates they're paying and offer them a lower rate. I could do that, no problem. Well, long story short, I did it for a few months and I was feeling really good. I don't know why other people were struggling because I could get anybody to listen to me. I could get anybody to agree to, to give me their information over the phone and I was having fun. So now here I am, I'm 21 years old and I decide, you know what? I think one day I wanna buy a house. I'm 21 years old, why not? I can buy a house. So you know what I did, Bruce? What's that? You know what I did? I decided I'm going to knock on the door of the vice president of this marketing company and I'm going to tell him I want to buy a house someday. So I waited for him to come in. I knocked on his door. He said, yes. I walked in and I said, hi, I'm Laura Brandeo When I work in the evening. I want to buy a house one day because I'm doing this mortgage campaign. And I said, I'm not asking for a raise. I'm just asking for some extra hours so that I can save. He's like, you know what? Would you like to run reports in the evening? I said, I absolutely could do that. The next day, someone showed me how to run reports. 
but I didn't just run the reports. I took the reports. I analyzed the reports. I took the reports and wrote my own commentary and recommendations of who should be doing what marketing campaign. And I left the copy with my notes for all the vice presidents to see. <laughs> Within a week, I was promoted to the manager of that company. Within five years, I ran the whole organization and I had over 200 people working in different mortgage campaigns within those five years while my children were growing, going to school. So what did we learn from that? One, I wanted something. I didn't let somebody tell me I couldn't go speak to the vice president. I didn't ask for more money. They wound up giving me more money, but I didn't ask for it. I actually proved to them why I was worth it. And then I received it. I didn't worry about what anybody else was saying or thinking. I knew I had to get to a certain place and I did it. And I continue to grow my relationships within that organization and learn and learn and learn. So by the time I left there five years later and I went to get a full-time job in the mortgage business, starting out as a sales manager, within three months of that, I was the COO of that mortgage company. You wanna know why? Because I generated so many sales, they couldn't keep up in ops. So I said, no problem. I'll learn how to process and underwrite loans, set up warehouse lines, and I'll take over operations too because no one can stop you from getting what you want, but you gotta be willing to actually jump in and learn it. I love it. So, I mean, you, you truly have the solopreneur mindset all the way back like, yes. before, that, before the term even existed, right? You're like, there's who all these knew? things. Who knew that? Who knew, right? And so you're out there doing all these things. So I took, a lot, uh, I took down a lot of different notes. Number one, so you talked about when we first met, you found out I'm the MC. I call that getting proximity to prosper. Yep. right? Is you, you understand um, who the influencers are, who, where the action is, how do we get around that? And, th and then to show up consistently and get around that action, right? So that's one thing any brand new or newer person or really anybody could learn from is being intentional with who am I getting around? What action do I need to get around? What event should I be attending? Right? And we put that's ourselves exactly in proximity right. to prosper. So, so that's, that's, that's the first note I took. Second thing you're talking about, you know, it's walking into the office and asking for more responsibility. Yep. Right. We often get what we want in life by simply asking for it, but a lot of people don't ask for it. And they so that's, that's one of the And big then they sit and they're upset that someone didn't give it to them. Yep. Don't expect someone to give it to you. You have to put yourself out there and tell them what you want. And it's not so much going in and demanding, you know, I want this. Tell them what your goals are. Yep. Tell them, I'm looking to eventually be here. I want to be on the path. Someday I want to be here. Once you've intentionally put that out as to what you want, people are more likely to help you get there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you know, we, we, we met at the 2020 Vision Conference with Christine Beckwith, as we talked about. And if you think about vision, if you think about anything in life, if you share your vision with other people, it's much more likely to come true because other people want to help you go yeah. out there and achieve it, right? So that's exactly what you're saying is you go in there and it's not just a, hey, what's in it for me? It's more of a, this is my vision. This is how I can help you get there. And this is how we can collaborate and partner together to help each other get to that end goal. Exactly. Which is awesome, right? Um, and then he's talked about showing the value. I think that's a bigger thing, you know, talking about my millennial generation. And I wrote a book when I was 24, 25 called Nexpert, where you're the next expert. Okay. And one of the things that I learned is moving the opposite direction of the negativity. Like a lot of people are saying all these bad things about millennials. We're entitled instant gratification. We're lazy. Like all those things. I'm like, man, those are all things I don't want to be a part of. Right. So I need to move in the opposite direction of that. And so one of the concepts I talk about in the book is chase skill sets, not paychecks early on. Absolutely. So that's pretty much what you're that talking about. You know, I, I tell the story that I remember making $7.50 an hour, okay? Like, I don't know why that particular number stands out so much in my brain because, not at, because I always said, I will show my value to the point that I will never even have to ask. People will be throwing money at me because they will not want me to ever leave them.
And that concept for the last 20 years has proven itself to be 100% accurate. But it's not a given. You have to be willing, like you said, you have to do your homework. You have to stay ahead. You have to differentiate yourself to be to have a special skill or a special talent or a special education or whatever it is, you have to be you and make yourself unique. And then the money will always follow. Always. Always. I love it. Perfect. So, well, let's fast forward then because you know, you, you did expand, you kept growing and you kept expanding and then you decided to take on the initiative of founding or launching the AFR wholesale company, right? Correct. Um, where you truly became the solopreneur in, in, in your business, where you were in charge of all of it. So talk about that experience early on. I, I mean, I'm sure you were excited, but also I'm sure you were anxious and maybe a little bit scared and, or naive even to think like, hey, I can go do all these crazy things. So just talk about that process. Absolutely. So as my mortgage career you know, grew and changed. You know, I built a couple of companies and then you came to 2007 when the crash was happening all around us and companies were going out of business and lots of bad. So during that time, I always thought to myself, you know, it's been great that I've been able to build up these different organizations, but I always thought to myself, what if I had the ability con to control everything, you know? And like you said, it's scary, you know, with that thought because it is all you. But even at that point, I had the confidence to bet on myself. So when the industry was crashing, I actually called a good friend of mine in the business and I said, all right, I know this is a crazy question, but do you know anywhere that might be safe? And she said, you know, I've got a client, a small client, that wants to start a wholesale division. Now, for those of you that don't know, wholesale means B2B. So mortgage companies working with other mortgage companies. So I was made an appointment and I went to meet him. And he's like, here's the vision. Here's the vision. We're going to do one program, FHA only, down to a 500 credit score, wholesale only, no correspondent, just broker. And I'm like, okay, I could do that. He goes, literally, you control it all. You hire whoever you want. You run it whatever way. You develop the culture. By the way, 100% commission, no salary, no benefits. Okay. <laughs> so at this stage in my life, I have a mortgage. I have a husband. I have two children in school. And with the crash of all the companies are closing around you. And so I jumped in the car after meeting him. And I first person I called my husband, I'm like, okay, here we, here's what we've got. And he's like, you're going to do that. And so the very first day on June 18th of 2007, I arrived at AFR and he pointed to the computer and he said, there's AFR wholesale, get started. And I sat down and the first thing I did was look up on HUD.gov. I, I pulled up every mortgage broker that was a mini, car, a mini sponsor. And at that time, I just started cold calling. I started just going back to my roots and I called them up and I said, hey, I'm Laura Brandeo from AFR Wholesale and I can do FHA loans down to 500 FICO scores. You know, what can I do to help you? That first month, I was able to close 10 files just me. I got them in. I processed them. I did give them to someone to underwrite because you can't do that. I had them underwritten by an underwriter. And that very first month, I structured AFR Wholesale. Now, in time, of course, we added more people. But again, let's go back. If I hadn't learned how to prospect, if I hadn't learned how to get on the phone, if I hadn't learned how to process those loans, how could I have possibly ever been able to build the company that I have now? That's where the solopreneur comes in. If I didn't have that foundation, I would have never been able to do that. I love it. I love it. I'm over here just taking down notes and you know, I have a, a litany of questions I want to get to then with you as we go through this process. So, so you're talking about solopreneurs, you know, and a lot of times you, my best definition, my favorite definition of confidence is the memory of success. Right. So the first thing that you do then when you go into a new role is confidence is a memory of success. 
I have certain skill sets to where I can work the phones. I know how to prospect. I know yeah. how to put together a call sheet or a list of people, my, my specific targets I want to go after, right? So that was a, that was a previous skill set that you acquired and now you just bring it over. Like we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Nope. Right. And I think that's a big challenge for, again, talking to our younger hustler folks that are out there is most people just need to get back to the basics of business. You know, your, your first thing wasn't, Hey, I need to go re I need to go create a logo. I need to go create a website. I need to go create uh, 15 different marketing collaterals. What did you do? Nope. You created customers. I did. And I think that's a, I think that's a very big point for, again, our, our younger, newer people out there because I was in Columbus. I was in Columbus. I took an Uber and of course there was a real estate agent that was driving me and I'm just asking him like, okay, well you're brand new. You're, you're three months in your business. Like, what are you doing on a daily basis? Like, well, I'm still working on my website. Nope. I'm still working on this. I'm so I'm like, Oh my gosh, dude, the point of any business is to create a customer. Right now, I believe marketing is important, but it's one of those things that you keep building up and it gets better and better and better. So I'm glad that you said that it, it, it like prospecting is such a big part of it and having something to say and knowing your value. Exactly. I mean, I can remember that very first month where people would go into FHA connection and they would be like, Laura, am I like only one of three clients signed up with AFR? And I'm like, do you see how lucky you are? I'm like, look at how much attention I'm going to give you. You're only three of my clients. And instead of them looking at it as a negative, they were like, yeah, I guess that's right. You're going to give me a lot of attention because I'm only one of three. Now, I was never afraid of that. And you know why I wasn't afraid of that? Because I knew that I could crush it with how I could service that client. I knew that I could take care of that borrower. So with that confidence of knowing the job I could do for them, there was not one objection they could have said to me that would have made me not go in and connect with them. Perfect. I love it. I love it. So, um, and, and your confidence does ooze. I just got to tell you, I, I just love your confidence and your energy. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer that we can borrow confidence from other people. I think you're right about that. Yeah. So, so I, that's why I love doing these interviews with people. It's as much for me as it is for our, our community of people is I love borrowing confidence and wisdom from other people. So let's, let's tap more into the wisdom then. So let's talk about, I'm just big into, you know, what are one or two or three pillars of your business. And again, you could talk about your business right now, or you can talk about going all the way back. But I'm, I am a big believer that a lot of people need to get back to the basics of their business. We have more resources. I mean, we're doing a video chat right now. It's amazing the resources that we can do, right? But I also think a lot of people get uh, overwhelmed. They get frustrated. They're, you know, they're chasing the shiny, shiny new objects. So if we could just talk about the three main pillars, again, let's say somebody's joining your team, your company tomorrow, and they're newer, like what are those three things that you're going to walk them through? Step I, mean, by step? I mean, I will tell you, and, and you're 100% correct about going back to basics, all right? One of the things that I have found, a couple of things I have found, and, and I'm, I'm speaking, forget about even my company, just as an individuals, you know, starting out or being a solopreneur or building a company. You're, you're correct. Everybody's out there kind of doing this squirrel, you know, their attention is like jumping all over the place and they're trying to look for this magic answer. Most of the magic answer is with you. You talked about the confidence. I promise you I have this running thing that most people will say yes to me. And the reason why they say yes to me is because they can't understand how I have so much energy and are so positive. So they kind of think I know something that they don't know. And they figure, well, shoot, if I say yes to her, to whatever it is, maybe I'll feel the same way. Now, the reason why that is, is because I'm so confident in myself. I have done many things in my life and have gotten to the point that whenever I try to be someone else, or I try to do something like someone else, that's when it doesn't work out. But a lot of times we are so looking for this magic answer. We're looking for this, this you know, get rich quick plan or whatever the case may be, that we lose sight that it's in us. 
Because when we share a piece of ourself in whatever it is, whether I have a marketing company and I want to help other people be able to market their program, or whether I have a mortgage company and I want to bring families home, or whether I'm coaching someone, or whatever the case may be, if I truly believe that I'm the best option and I'm passionate and confident in what I do, that other person will immediately bond with you. I promise you, like you said, you don't have to have the slickest logo. You don't necessarily have to um, come up with the, you don't have to be the lowest price, right? You don't have to be the lowest price. You don't have to be the quickest service. Now price and service are important, not to say it isn't, but it's not the most important all the time. Okay. So the thing that I have learned is number one for, for individuals, be yourself. Be yourself. You don't have to be other people. Be the best you. The second thing is relationship. I believe technology is fabulous and wonderful and I'm all for it 100%. I'm all about it. I'm on video. I do all this great stuff. But the old school relationship and getting to know people and the value, I can't even tell you how many clients I get with a handwritten note. I can't even tell you. I mean, it blows my mind with how many people actually stick with me through good and bad time because of notes I send them. Now, something like that has to be genuine. Do not try to make it cookie cutter and the same thing over and over. It has to be authentic to you. So if you're not somebody that's comfortable doing it, don't do it. For me though, relationship absolutely has been one of the main pillars of my company because people get to know me. People realize that I am a very straight shooter. Whatever I say, it's 100% the truth because I have learned that you're never going to remember the things that you're not truthful about. So you better be truthful. <laughs> so people honor that and people respect that. So I think that be yourself, be authentic also, be relational. And my third pillar, forget my company, myself, no one's going to outwork me either. I have probably one of the strongest work ethics <laughs> there is. Now, why is that? Because that's how passionate I am about whatever I do. I do it because I, I never feel like I work a day in my life because that's how much I love what I do. I love it. I love it. So number one, be yourself. Yes. Right? One of my favorite quotes about that, you know, be yourself. Everybody's already taken, right? <laughs> so, so that's true. a great one. <laughs> that is true. But I will say, you know, talking about like being yourself and being authentic, um, you know, it's like, I don't want to go on a rant, but you know, I'm a former professor, I have a PhD, all that kind of stuff. And it used to drive me crazy because none of this stuff is taught in schooling. No. You know, like how to, how to be yourself, how to be authentic, what are your beliefs, why do you believe it, how to build and strengthen relationships, right? How to build in work ethic. It's just like a lot of this stuff is not taught in the schooling system. And so I'm, I'm glad that you went through those three. And a lot, of, a lot of that stuff, it all depends on the environment you were brought up in, right? Yep. A lot of it is the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, talking about work ethic, right? I, I remember one of my, one of my graduate advisors um, or our department chair at one of the universities I was at, he used to ask me, he's like, you know, you're 29, you have a PhD, you're one of the youngest professors here. Uh, you know, like, where does all that come from? Where does a work ethic come from? Like, can, you, can you teach that to my son? And I'm like, probably not. No, you know, probably not. So that's, that's definitely a hard one to talk through as, of work ethic. Um, I will ask you, uh, you know, so talking about you going to events or making calls and stuff like that. So back when you were getting started, did, like, did you have like benchmarks? Did you have a scoreboard? Did you have Absolutely. accountability? Um, was it, was it, was it just, just you just picking up the phone and going to work? No, I mean, listen, and, and it's funny. I, I actually remember how I met Christine was she interviewed me for, for a show. And she asked me, what was my definition of success? That was actually one of the questions that she asked me. And I said, well, I think success varies depending on your age. You know, when I was in my 20s, success to me was a dollar number. 
you know, I was, listen, by the time I'm 29, I plan on be making X. And, you know, that was what I needed to. And I even said, by the time I was 30, I wanted to start my own company, which of course I did. And then as I was in my 30s, it was, I now want sky's the limit, you know, I'm going for it. And that's when I started AFR. So in my 30s, I started AFR because I said, okay, here's my big push to do that. Now, as you're in your 40s, your idea of success changes, right? So now, of course, yeah, I've done it. I've built the company. I've hit the X dollar number in my, my income. You know, I've, I've reached president level. I'm the, I'm the only woman partner at AFR. So I think that's another huge accomplishment that I'm an owner of this company and I'm the only woman. All of those things were check, 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 check. And now, honestly, doing something like this, now I feel that I'm at the stage in the game. Now I want to teach other people. Yeah. Yep. Now, I didn't have any time to teach anybody when I was coming up because I was working my butt off to make sure I hit every one of those checks. I hit all those checks. Yep. I had a whole list of them, and honestly, every one of them was marked off. Very goal-driven, very laser-focused. Like, literally, like, you know, I'm hitting this no matter what. There is no – it's funny. There could be years that passed that I don't even pay attention to what was going on because I was that focused of – blinders, just blinders. I'm hitting it. No one's stopping me. And I did. I was able to do that. But then as your career goes on, now it's, well, I want to teach the generation behind. I want to share some of this because honestly, I was so laser focused at that time. I didn't even pay attention to hear what other people were doing. <laughs> I was like, I just got to focus. I just got to, you know, work. Which work, is work, good. Work. Which is good at I that guess. point. I guess. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's fun now to kind of share it and, and to hope that maybe I can inspire somebody. Stop looking for the magic answer and get to work. I love it. See, just, just some old school, like just, just roll up the sleeves, elbow grease, get to work. Get to work. You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, all right, so you do have a lot of energy. I have, I have two questions and then, and then we'll, we'll wrap this bad boy up. Okay. Uh, so number one would be, you know, you're talking about your, your laser focus. Um, so how do you celebrate progress along the way? Because for somebody that like you, that is so driven, that is laser focused. I'm sure you're a high D if we talked about the disc profile. Oh, I am a very high D. Okay. <laughs> high D, high I, I'm guessing. I am. That's All right. it. <laughs> um, so, so which means, and I'm the same way, which means success, like success, like you're saying, it's like, it's a rival fallacy. It's just, we keep, it's, it's you, always, never, you never reach it. We're never going to reach it. We keep moving it. We keep moving it. So how, how would you advise someone? Because a lot of salespeople that are, are, that are solopreneurs or high D high eyes, is that something you've learned to cope with or to get better at or make it like being intentional with, or is it just, it is what it is? You know, it's very interesting. This is a really good point because it's, you know, it's funny years ago, I used to listen to Howard Stern and you would hear him talk about this. He would say, my God, I'm making hundreds of millions of dollars, but still I haven't reached where I want to go to because there's always more, there's always more. You're always trying to get to that next level. And it is a struggle. I, I completely appreciate that. But I will tell you what keeps me grounded, two things. One, my team, and two is my family, okay? Because although I'm so laser focused and I'm hitting those goals, I have to keep in mind that that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. So you have to allow your time to be, to celebrate, like you said, you have to remember that you don't have to have everybody around you be like you. As you mature, you realize that what we think is not necessarily what other people think. And you can't expect the others to think the same as you. And that's okay. When you're first coming up, you think everybody has to be like you and you think everybody has to work like you and you think everybody has to be as driven and as focused. You're mistaken. <laughs> and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't have to all be alike. That's what makes the world great is that we're all different. So to answer your question, you celebrate those successes with your team and your family because they will keep you grounded. I almost hope, you know, for all of you, I'm lucky to have a husband that is not like me, meaning he balances me. He keeps me to where I could be up here and he could be here and we even each other out. 
that's a really smart thing. That's good because if two of us were both the same, I think we'd bounce off the walls. So that's a good thing. Keep your family, keep your team to celebrate those successes because believe me, if you only focus on this, it's going to be a lonely world. Yeah, I, I feel like I needed to hear that message today. So I appreciate you saying that because I am that way with, with my team where it was constantly like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it becomes not fun. It no. becomes not fun for them. It becomes and not fun. it's not fair to it's do that fair. to them. Yeah. It's not. And yeah. I will give you another piece of advice. You can still hit your goals being mindful that they're not exactly like you. Yeah. And that again is maturity. You mature into that. I love it. I love it. All right. So final question then, it, it gets back to your energy and your confidence. Where, how do you keep your energy up? I mean, have you always just been a high energy person or are there things that you, you do? Because I am a big Stephen Covey whole person theory, mind, body, heart, spirit. Yes. Right. The, the mind's need is to learn. The, the body's need is to live. The heart's need is to love. And the spirit's need is to leave a, leave a legacy. Right. Mm -hmm. We all have different quotients for all four parts. And for you, your energy, like I said, it is contagious. So how do you keep your energy level up? Because I'm sure when you build out your brand consistency and reputation, your personal brand, people are coming to you for your confidence. They are. And they're coming to you for your energy. So when Laura doesn't have confidence or energy one day, they're like, oh crap, what's going on here? Right? Uh, well, the good news is Laura always has it with the exception if I'm sick, like physically sick. Besides that, all day, every day, doesn't matter what time of the day, but for me, it is consistency for me, meaning I literally go to sleep nine o'clock every night. Does not matter if it's the weekend, does not matter when it is, 9 p.m. every night, I'm asleep. I get a full eight hours of sleep regardless, okay? Because I do believe your body needs to rest. Yeah. Your body needs to allow yourself to be fully asleep. It's a healing process. So I am very regimented down to, like I said, I go to sleep the same time. I wake up the same time. I exercise the same time. I eat the same food every single day. Literally me and my husband have a schedule and I eat exactly the same foods every day with the exception if I'm traveling. Okay, that is the only time I do not. What that does is that makes my body feel good. I, it gives me energy, gives me strength. So I agree with you. A hundred, oh, other things you talked about the mind. I never listen to the news. I do not watch television. I am a hundred percent, everything is either music, podcast. I do watch like YouTube videos, TED Talks, love TED Talks. Anything I can do to feed my mind constantly reading. So I, no matter what the subject is, I will always continue to feed my mind to keep myself sharp, keep myself interesting. So when I'm networking, I can have a conversation about different things for different people because I'm educated on different topics. So I think, how do you keep your energy up? For me, consistency, keeping everything always the same. That way my body is healthy, my mind is healthy, and I'm ready to go. I love it. This is perfect. So I appreciate your time. I really do, Laura. Um, I, I mean, I personally learned so much and you're talking about those, those two key traits, you know, talking about uh, getting up earlier than most people want to get up at, right? The consistency of getting up and getting that morning routine and then feeding your mind. When you study successful people, and again, like you, like you said, like success, like that's a definition that varies, but those are two, two of the most consistent things that people do that, yeah. that are the most successful people is they, they wake up and they get up earlier than most. They get a good night's sleep, but they get up earlier than most and they read, they feed their mind. Right? Yeah, so it's perfect. important. It, it really is. And it's not new. I've been doing this for 20 yeah. years. That's just yeah. who I am. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the last point then. It's not new. Most, a lot of this stuff isn't new. It's common yeah. sense isn't common practice though. When it comes to picking up the phone and making calls, the phone's not going to call itself, right? Getting proximate to prosper, uh, showing up around the action, flying in your own dime, to go to Tampa Bay and to get around other people, other big times influencers, right? There's a lot of things that are just get back to the basics of business. So I appreciate you so much for coming on our show and sharing your, your wealth of wisdom. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Bruce. One last question. Where can, if, if somebody wants to find you, where's the best place? 
All right. So if you want to connect on LinkedIn, it's Laura Brandeo. Um, my email is Laura at AFRWholesale.com. I will tell you a funny story. One time I did a podcast with someone. They reached out to me on LinkedIn and I'm literally now doing a podcast with that person. You actually met her. You met her at, at Christine's event. So just a funny story of, I really like meeting new people. Um, I believe that we can learn lots of things from each other, you know, regardless of what industry, regardless of who we are as humans, I think it's important to connect and share a little piece of each other because we can because, all because we become the sum total of those we hang around the most, right? That's exactly right. So, well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it.